Here we have a forest ecosystem. An ecosystem is made of both biotic and abiotic factors. The biotic factors shown only represent the producer population of the forest. Producers are the base of all ecosystems. If there's a lot of producers, we can support a lot of consumers. This ecosystem has a high level of biodiversity or diversity of species. Ecosystems that have lots of biodiversity are more stable. Stable ecosystems remain intact for long periods of time, but environmental changes can disrupt stable ecosystems. This includes natural disasters like fire, tornadoes, and hurricanes, and human activity like deforestation. Can ecosystems recover from disturbances? Ecological succession describes the growth of a stable ecosystem over time. Ecosystems can rebuild after a disturbance by the process of ecological succession. Organisms can only establish themselves in an ecosystem if the environmental conditions are suitable for their needs. Let's track the growth of the producer population over time and see how each stage of ecological succession modifies the environment. Over time, decomposers break down the dead trees and regenerate soil. This makes the environment suitable for simple producers such as moss and grass. Simple producers provide food and shelter making the environment suitable for simple consumers, like insects and mice. As the soil continues to regenerate, the environmental conditions are suitable for larger producers. Bushes and shrubs begin to grow in the ecosystem. The environment is now suitable for larger herbivores and small carnivores. Trees begin to grow, providing food, shelter, and habitat for more species. A variety of tree species becomes well established and biodiversity is high. The ecosystem, now fully recovered, is called a climax community. During each stage of ecological succession, biodiversity increases. During each stage of ecological succession, stability increases. Ecological succession is yet another example of the interdependence of organisms in an ecosystem.